So, so I think definitely with like lesson plans, you know, cap has them, mayhem has them, it, any program, like if the gym is getting a program from somebody and if they're not, and even if like the head coach is programming in-house, there should be some kind of written lesson plan um, there. But I, I will say, I think five out of six days a week, it doesn't fit perfectly. Um, I would say there are more like rough drafts is how I would look at them. And like, you're using that rough draft to make into your final draft of what you're going to do. Um, cause something I've noticed is like, when it comes to some of the warm ups, like how many times have you guys looked and they're like, you need a kettlebell, a band, a barbell, a PVC pipe and a sled. And you're like, I'm not having to get all that out. Like one, I'm going to lose 10 minutes of class. And then, you know, two, sometimes you don't even have all that equipment. So definitely use those like as your rough drafts and never, I wouldn't say like pretty much never as a final draft of what you're doing. And if you ever listen to any of these people talk about these programmings, none of them say you should be running exactly what we're writing. They all should, they all say each gym should be tweaking based on demographic, spacing, all that stuff. Um, that being said, lesson plan is going to be kind of like our topic, but more more in the sense of like we're going to talk about whiteboard brief. And then I have um, Jose's lesson plan. I have Elise's little lesson plan she wrote. We have pieces that we flashed on Thursday. Um, and then I have mine from Mayhem yesterday, which I think would be cool because you, you guys have to deal with Mayhem. I want to well. know. And that was a challenging. That because yesterday was crazy. Challenging. Yeah, you, you had to not waste any minutes and you had to make complete use of the 60 minutes. So I think if you had five minutes of like general warm up that wasn't going to be moving you in the needle of teaching and coaching, you kind of missed your timeline there. Or you had to cut, you know, some off the power clean. And I'll, I'll show you guys what the workout was and we'll go through that as well. Um, so even if you have a wad like 50 filthy, sorry, filthy 50, um, that would be a workout that you need 30, 35 minutes for, and you have to move really fast. So even if it's not strength and neck on, it'll kind of give you some ideas and tools on, on how to run and stuff like that. Um, let's let's talk whiteboard brief first, and then we'll kind of move over to the lesson plans and what we've got and integrate the whiteboard brief, but also like into the rest of our plans. Whiteboard brief. What is Couple, couple different stages in the anatomy of what's happening in, in your three-minute talk, basically. Um, three minutes is a loose number. It can be a little faster. It can be a hair longer. We just don't ever want to get to a belaboring point. Like, think of yourself as an athlete. Once that coach talks too much, it doesn't matter what they say. You're zoned out. You're drinking your pre-workout. You're trying to say something to your friend. I, I'll hide in the bathroom sometimes. I've done that. I'm guilty. Like, you're, you're out. So, 2.30 to 3.30 is like your time frame, I would say. Um, you're starting off your whiteboard brief. You're bringing everybody in. What's the first thing you're doing? Saying the workout. Saying hello. No. Yeah, saying, yeah. I guess you would have I mean, said hi when you brought everybody. But yeah, saying, <laughs> saying the workout. Jose's just more cordial than the rest of us. Um, <laughs> yeah, workout in, in the flow. Like what direction you're going in. So not just like, hey guys, this is a 21, 15, 9 thruster and pull up. We get what that means. There may be somebody in class that doesn't. So like dissecting it like you're talking to a child. And I know it seems redundant and it's going to be for most people, but there always is that person or two that just doesn't get it. And if you've been coaching more than a week, you know who's going to ask you the question. Um, so, you know, guys, we're doing 21 thrusters. 21 pull-ups, 15 thrusters, 15 pull-ups, nine, nine, like literally dissect it like that. So they know each point that they're walking to and executed. Um, I made the mistake the other day, Saturday class, crazy class. It was a 40, 20, 10. And that's how I said 40, 20, 10. We're going to do dumbbell snatch, toes the bar. I had a free trial. He thought they were doing 40 dumbbell snatch, resting, 20 dumbbell snatch, resting, 10 dumbbell snaps resting and then going to the toes the bar. So it just goes to show that it's, it's, we, we can take those rep schemes for granted. Don't. Um, so what the workout is, what the flow of it is really simple. Like you're talking, you got a five year old class. Um, that's including rest periods. So whether if it's an interval workout or it's a heavy day, you know, guys, we're going to do three back squat. Once you're done with three back squat, 
this is up to you how you want to structure. You're going to rest three minutes and then hit your second set of three back squat. Or maybe, you know, I'm going to put a clock on every three minutes and 30 seconds, the clock's going to ding and that's your cue for your next set. So I like to personally set clocks. It keeps people, the group together. And it also just like gives you a point where you can split people up to watch more people to coach as well. Um, what's the next thing that you're doing? So you've laid out the workout, what the flow is. Everyone understands how, what, what they're actually doing today. Now, what do they need to understand? Stimulus. Talk about, what did you say? I said yeah, a stimulus. I, I, a stimulus, yeah. Stimulus. Yeah, so that's going to be the next thing. Give me some examples of what the stimulus would be. Today is a heavy day. Or yep. today for time, it's a time domain. For time, um, what what your rounds and reps are gonna be? Um, is it a heavy day? Is it for load? Maybe maybe it's a practice day. You know, there's gonna be all different types of of stimuluses in that. Um, that's gonna be really important. Like I know, you know, mayhem likes to do this. I've seen it in cap before, where it'll be ten minutes of of, of handstand practice. Letting them know the guys, the point is not to hammer yourself upside down. The point is to be calm, have a low heart rate, practice your handstand, but you're in a state where you can still chat and make some friends along the way. Um, so yeah, what the stimulus is going to be. Third thing. Scaling. Scaling. How are we going to get it? <laughs> How are we going to get to the stimulus? How are we going to execute and, and get to where our goal is going to be. Um, so scaling options. I also think laying out scaling options helps the flow of the class. So like yesterday we had pull-ups in our mayhem workout in my whiteboard brief. I said scaling options for the pull-ups are gonna be, we're gonna lessen reps or we're gonna do jumping pull-ups. And I, if I'm changing the scale based on what it is, based on the stimulus of the workout, I also like to let them know why. So like that workout yesterday, pretty much everybody capped out. Guys, we need to move fast. We can't get stuck on the pull-ups. So we're going to do jumping pull-ups rather than banded where you're going to have to break, you're going to have to rest and we're going to lose more time. So it's, it, having that little explanation of each scale also, I think lets your class know that you have also planned, not just based on, I'm going to give you an easy scaling option today, but why I'm picking the scale we're doing today for the stimulus I want you to get. So like a heavy day pull-up, Jumping pull-ups would be a terrible modification, right? I want to make sure that they get some strength and like they get fatigued in that sense. So, so finding, the, um, giving the scaling that fits what the stimulus would be for that day. Um, and then last but not least, you said it in a little, I always do this personally. It's not an optional for me. What's the last one? What's the last thing you might have a question on as an athlete? People ask all the time. How much weight? You no, know, we'll kind of go in, in, in scaling. How should I break it up? Like we hear that, so strategy. Strategy, strategy what, yeah. What your strategy is going to be. Um, things to hold, hold on to, things to break, how many times to break. That can also kind of go into your, your stimulus as well. Um, yesterday, we started the workout off with 30 pull-ups. And I said, your strategy should be breaking twice, but quick breaks. So they know, don't hang on. You're going to run yourself into trouble, but we also can't do a little dally. 10, 10, 10, get it done. Um, but give yourself that grip breather and like, you know, heart rate. Um, strategy is also going to be the rest periods on a heavy day. Like making sure they understand like your third rep of that three back squats, it's going to get real sticky and you're not going to want to talk to your friends after. You're going to want to sit down for a minute and catch your heart rate. And, and settle before you talk. So we're going to take that full three minutes rest so we can duplicate it again. Same thing on an interval. Um, I think if you're concise and, and you have a plan of your whiteboard brief and you don't jumble around, you'll have time for strategy every single time. I think if you tend to find yourself talking and jumbling and it's like you didn't have this body of anatomy that you're going check one, check two, check three, that's when you're going to start to over talk and run out of time because you'll notice you'll start to like 
it'll be the wad flow and then you'll do a scaling option in the wad flow and then you'll go to a strategy and then you go back to the wad to finish the wad flow and it starts to become this like circle around and you and you're 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 delivering all three pieces at different time at the same time kind of so it never goes one two three four that's the easiest way i think to dissect it what's the workout the flow how fast how heavy do we want to go or how many rounds and reps how are we going to scale to make sure that we do that? And then I'm going to recommend breaking X, Y, Z or whatever, whatever that's going to be. Questions on that. This is, I think, the easiest one to record yourself on. I know you feel shy and it's not really fun to always record. No one cares. Like, it's not that bad. We all hate the sound of our voices. I promise. I still don't like watching myself. Um, and I have to watch myself talk to you guys twice a week. So record it. You don't have to show anybody. Go watch it yourself and give yourself a black or white checklist. Did I do the flow? Did I do the stimulus? Did I do scaling? Did I do strategy? The answer is either yes or no. The answer may be yes, but you're like, man, my order is fucked up. So I've changed my order. So it's not even something I think you have to go send to somebody or we're going to show on the call. Just give yourself a one, two, three, four checklist. You guys want to practice? Let's practice. Let's do, let's do a heavy day to start. And Mayhem, we have heavy days too. So it would be the same thing. I, I, I do it when my Mayhem people, I do one, two, three, four on whatever the skill of strength is. And then I go one, two, three, four on whatever the Metcon is. So I usually just segment like that. Let's go heavy day. Power pin. Seven sets of three. Who wants to give me the flow? I'll do it if I have to. I'll go. Um, all right, Lise. So, all right, guys, we got heavy power cleans today, seven sets of three. So that means you're doing three reps for seven sets. Recommend resting between two to three minutes in between. If you are choosing to stay at a heavy weight, about 80% of your one rep max, rest about two, two and a half minutes. If you're increasing load throughout to find your heavy set of three for today, then you're going to, as it gets heavier, you're going to rest between two and a half and three minutes. So the whole workout should basically be about 21 minutes. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to add a little bit to it because you're also in front of you on the spot. So a couple of things I really like. She answered the question of how heavy should this set be? She gave the 80% range, right? We have that. Um, and then she even gave two options of you can just kind of keep it at 80, go all seven sets at 80, or you can build up and try to establish maybe a new three rep max. What I would say is there's no right or wrong to do that. You can go either way. Um, I like to always add in that at some point, maybe it's going to be set five, set six, your fatigue might start to set in and we actually may deload the bar back down a little bit. That's okay if we need to do that. Um, and the only thing I would add in when I get to, when I start to talk about that, like that stimulus and she's talking about the percentage, I would also add in that we're going to have some warm up sets. And, and I would probably write this on the board for people that like your first set of three is going to be at 45%. Your second set of three is going to be at 55, 60%. Your third set of three is going to be at 65, 70%. And then the fourth set is going to be your actual first set of the workout. Um, so I think on heavy days, lay yourself out a building in a, a specific warm up to the load that you want them to start with. Um, Cause then otherwise what happens, I know we've all been here. You have somebody that is on set one and they've hit their first set and then the person next to them is on set five somehow already and they're like well i'm done and it's not really that they're done they just counted all their warm-up sets as sets of the workout um so that's the only thing i would layer in there but at least that was beautiful i think really nice nice job with that um as far as scaling options go on a heavy day, that's going to kind of come down to more or less like where's their skill level or are they in pain for something? Um, and I think that's going to be a little bit more of like an uh, individual conversation. 
right? So you just you can finish it out if, if, if your back's bothering you for today or you have any injuries, let me know. So your scaling options may be hand clean, dumbbell clean, could be you know, just something of that nature to give you give you some some uh, differences. Overall, though, my nice job, Elise. Did you guys have any questions off of her brief as an athlete? Should you say something like, you know, obviously 80 is more to the heavy side, but something, somebody that doesn't have a one rep max doesn't really know how that even oh, feels. Yeah, great, good. I forgot that. Yeah, definitely. I, like in the stimulus, like whether it's, if it's a heavy day, it's heavy, right? Um, if it's a, a Metcon, we still want to give like, this is a light barbell. This is a moderate barbell. This is a heavy barbell because looking at what the RX loads are for a Metcon, someone may think 135 is heavy as hell. And in reality, for the, the point of riding the Metcon, 135 is a light load, you know? So we want to be like, this load is supposed to be light regardless of what's on the board. For the heavy day, um, obviously not everyone's going to have percentages. So like you can use like an RPE or tell them like rep one isn't bad, rep two gets a little bit heavy, and then rep three are really going to have to focus. That's going to be a heavy rep when you finish three, you probably have one more clean in you, but you would fail that fifth one so that you give them a reference point. Like you can hit another one, but you're probably going to fail the last one or like however you want to stage that in your heavy, I would say stage it, stage it that way. And then also you're still going to be coaching each individual. So if I have someone, you know, like Issa that moves cleans very well, I'm going to push her to more of a failure point than I'm going to push my month one guy i'm gonna tell him i want you to be able to have three cleans left in the tank versus i'm pushing her to like close to a failure three rep max point. Uh, so i'll give that like general info but then if you're not married to it you're still going to individually give cues to each person as well on that i also for heavy day went to set a non-negotiable so like on our power clean for example my non-negotiable might be when you guys land I need your butt back and down, right? Because we know what happens on, on heavy cleans. People will get tall, they lean back, they have a muted hip, and they're compromising their spine. So like my non-negotiable, you're going to land it. If you can't keep your feet under you in your squat stance and your butt's back and down, then we're going to lighten the load. Um, what would be a good non-negotiable for a heavy day squat? I have two favorites. Flat feet the whole time? use flat feet i love to use range of motion because what happens people start to get shallow on you and they start to parallel squat and then they, they cut their range so range of range of motion is probably my favorite non-negotiable and then the second one is is like frontal planning where are the shoulders when if your shoulders start to get in front of your toes guys we're going to lighten the load so now i'm keeping them i'm keeping their midline a, a lot more secure so those are my two favorite ones when it comes to squats doesn't matter what you pick. You can pick any um, point of performance to do and have them focus on it for the day. And if, if you're picking flat feet, it's more than probably every other coach just said, you know. Um, so have like little goals and like things that you're going to strive for, in, especially in heavy days for the day. That also kind of lays down what for our members. The threshold training, right? If I start to make my squat shallow, if I start to fall over, then I'm not threshold training. My, my points of performance are falling apart and I have to reel it back. I have to lighten the load to be able to keep those good moving patterns. Let's go a, a Metcon now. Let's do, I don't want something too easy for you guys. Let's go 20, 21, 15, nine, front squats and calorie row in between each round of 400 meter run. So this workout gets laid out. What's the first thing you have to do? He said, this is your, this is for you. This is your practice, what we talked about. The first thing I have to do is go over the flow of the workout. Go over the flow. As a coach, what information do you need to know next to be able to deliver? I don't know. Stimulus. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> how long is this workout going to take right so before i get up there and i whiteboard brief i have to know what my time frame of stimulus is going to be 
right? So I think the more you coach, the more you do CrossFit, the easier it is to start to come up with these numbers, right? Dissect your workout. So when you guys are coming up with the stimulus, and I know this is something that you said you felt like you struggled with, write your workout out. How long is a 21 cal row going to take? Anybody can chime in. We don't have to put Issa on the spot here. See, I don't even two know. Minutes. <laughs> okay. Two minutes. Around two minutes, maybe. Let's go girls and guys. Girls, what do you say? Two minutes? More or less. Boys. I would say Jose. minutes. Yeah. Well, Jose, oh, what, okay, what's, what's... Miss Miss Rower, Miss Collegiate Rower. Oh, no, Rower. no, no. Hold on. No, no. Stop. <laughs> To not even no you're it right it could be a, a minute and a half you got to do from your best one right yeah it ain't because elise is a good rower we, we've got to find know. yeah we've got to find our, our, our sorry elise is a good rower but what i was gonna say is i'm not <laughs> a great rower and i'm i'm still getting off that rower and sub a minute right jose what would you say about a minute yeah i run a minute we don't have a guy and girl split here so so oh, you're, you're right. gonna yeah you're you're gonna give the 90 seconds you're right Right. So you go 90 seconds for 21 squats or sorry, 21 cow row, 21 squats. What's that going to take us? Let's say let's say load is 135.95. So what would we call that load? Moderate. Moderate. I would, yeah. call, I would call it moderate to class. So am I thinking people are going to go unbroken on the 21? No, probably not. Probably a break. Probably like an 11, 10 situations happening. So how, how, you can even dissect in that. So how, how long are 11 front squats going to take? Like 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Yeah. 20 to 30 seconds, right? We'll call it 30. You know, let's say there's a little bit of a cadence there. So let's say 30 seconds, they drop the bar. They take a, a 10 second breather. They clean it back up. They do their second set, right? So we're looking at like a minute 10. So now with our row and our front squats, we're at like, 230 to 240 range, right? What's our 400 meter run? This one's easy because it stays the same the whole time. A pace 400 Two meter minutes. run. Two minutes is always a safe bet. Yeah, you're going to have people that are faster. You're going to have people that are slower. Um, and then fifth round of routine. There's some fatigue there. Let's call it like another minute 15 and another minute 15, even though it's less reps, we're probably going to be moving a little slower. So you see how I just start to stack. I start to just take my round one. I'm going to add a little bit of fatigue into round two. Same thing with round three. And generally at 2159, the reps are changing. So I'm kind of staying the same on my split time from round one and my split time from round two, more or less. It's very close. If it was the same rep scheme, so let's say it was 21-21, run 21-21, then I may add another 15 or 20 seconds to round two. And I just start stacking those to find my, my zone. I'm going to find my low end or my middle track. I'm probably going to subtract a minute off of where I land, and I'm probably going to add maybe a minute off where I land. So let's say this total time goes six minutes for the run plus three, nine, plus three, 12, I'm going to say about a 13 minute workout in that range. Okay. So I'm going to say, guys, our, our goal for today is going to be 12 to 14 minutes. All right. I personally hate time caps. I think if you have to lean on a time cap, you're not doing your job as a coach when it comes to scaling. Um, for stuff like strength and Metcon, the way mayhem is, the time caps are kind of there because we have to teach a whole other component as well. Um, but you guys that are coaching strength and Metcon and mayhem, don't rely on the time cap. Scale people to that stimulus that they have. And the time cap is just your, your safety net because you're not just doing one Metcon. You didn't have time to um, run test rounds and things like that, like real test rounds. Does that make sense? I have a question about time caps. Like, should I absolutely cut people off at the time cap? Or, like, is it okay? Because... Obviously, I guess it's my bad. Sometimes it's my bad. Sometimes it's their bad for not listening to what I am expecting of them. But, like, is it that bad to let, let them just finish it, even if they're, like, a minute off? No. I mean, if, 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 like if, if you I have time. If I write a workout and the workout could snowball and become devastating and I know that, then I'm going to have a time cap. It's like cap is like a safety net for volume. Right. Mayhem's Friday workout. It's a, it's a minute on. It's like bench press and then max toes the bar. It's like a minute on, minute off. 
your workout's done when you hit 100. There's people of this world that will be doing that workout for 45 minutes, right? Is it appropriate to have them do that many bench press? No, it's not. So the time cap's like going to be to kind of save them and they get to a point and they have to stop and they have to rest. So like to work out like that, a hard time cap can be like a safety thing. Um, but otherwise, like you should be striving to never hit time cap and having them finish and scaling. I know there's some stubborn people of the world, but if it's something like this workout that we just said, and you, you time capped it at 15 minutes and someone picked up the barbell and they have eight more front squats, let them finish the front squats, you know? And that's where you, have you guys ever heard the term hard cap or soft cap? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like to use the term soft cap with my class sometimes. And that's me saying like 15s are cut off, but if you're there, I'm going to let you finish. If you're around away, dude, you shit the bed and you didn't listen to anything I had to say today. I'm going to, I'm going to cut you off. We're not going to go till 25 minutes. Um, but if you're close, like go ahead and finish it. I think that's fine. Um, time caps are always a good self guide to did I coach well when it came to scaling? I think a lot of times we always just think, okay, no pull ups, jumping pull ups, or ring rows, or whatever it's going to be. It's not just the movement, it's the reps, it's the movement, it's the load. Like so many things are going to come in the blend, which you'll see that when I talk about the mayhem workout we had yesterday, like how strategic I was in finding caps. We had five total finishers yesterday um, amongst all classes. Four of them were in my class. I was upset that my whole class didn't do it, but it goes to show the direction and how that can make a difference. Um, any other thoughts like when it comes to like those whiteboard briefs and things like that? Okay, cool. Easy, your homework. Whenever you have your Metcon, don't cheat, don't go to class and steal another coaches. All I want you to do is write the Metcon on a paper and break down each movement and how much time it is and send it to me. And then I'll concur or not concur. And we'll okay. just start to get better at that. Um, yeah. As athletes, like when you guys are trying to develop times, like everybody on here, I would say is better athlete, better mover. Start to notice what things take you like per section of the workout, not just whole workouts. You know, what does a 21 calorie row take me? What does a 400 meter run take me? Because those are all going to be informational tools to find those stimulus a lot quicker. If you're not sure, ask, you know, Jose, what's it take you to run a 400 meter? He probably knows a general idea. Ask some of those athletes that have been around more. You guys remember uh, Hunter, right? Like Hunter is a good, a good example because he's been an athlete so long. He knows all of his numbers. So find those people like him and pick their brains. Um, and then consider what would your free trial do that's 35 pounds overweight. So you get this like zone and not a set set mark. Um, okay, cool. So just a quick whiteboard recap. Wad, flow of the workout, stimulus, scaling options, strategy. Sometimes I'll save strategy for right to the workout. Um, or I'll do it twice. So like doing a quick little recap before they start I, isn't always a bad thing. Okay, let's look at some of our plans. Let's start with this. Sorry, I can't see it. I'm finding it. There we go. All right. Workout of the day, three mom 21, minute one, three squat snatches, minute two, eight strict toes to bar, minute three, 12 push-ups. So you've got two complex movements and like a caveman. The push-ups obviously is going to be a little simpler in there. You don't have to stress as much as the other two. Um, Issa, how would you brief this? Okay, I would start with we're doing an every minute on the minute for 21 minutes. First minute is going to be three squat snatches. Second minute is eight strict toaster bar. And third minute is 12 push-ups. That's the flow of the workout. Um, the stimulus of the workout, it's supposed to be heavy. We're working on strength and strength on our squat snatch and strength with the strict toaster bar. So you want to do pretty heavy squat snatches that you're not going to fail, but you'll be able to do all three. Um, yeah. Scaling, I guess. So for the squat snatches, um, the scaling would be the load. So go a little bit lighter if you feel like you're still working on your squat snatch. Um, 
for strict toast to bar, we can do banded toast to bar. You can do ring rows as well. Um, and then for push ups, you can do knee push ups. All right, I got some homework for you. Okay. Pra pra practice, <laughs> practice your brief before people are staring at you. Okay. Because I think your knowledge is there. You just get a little nervous and you're like, oh yeah. shit. Right? I know That's that like I rush through everything. Average. Yeah. I'm, I'm fast too. Um, so mm. I have to sometimes intentionally slow myself down and just like a couple quick little like tips. We know what an imam is a free trial or a month one doesn't. So every minute on the minute, minute one, we're going to do three squat snatches. Here's where you missed. Once you're done with your third squat snatch, rest the remainder of that minute. So like those details can can help people guide more. Because like how many times have you had someone do an imam and they go, they hit the three squat snatches and then they're going to their bar to do toes of bar. And they just didn't mm. get it. They had that buffer. So just a little, that little detail. And then like on your scaling options, write those down before class. So like squat snatch, obviously load is one. What's another issue with squat snatches? People's range of motion, their skill, and, and that kind of thing. So, guys, we may also do a power snatch into an overhead squat, potentially. And through the workout, we'll try to work you toward it. So you just have a little more tools there. Um, and don't feel rushed, right? You're public speaking. Everybody else in that class is terrified of public speaking. So you're already doing more. And you're more accomplished as a human being than probably everybody else in that class is, right? That's like the number one fear. It's like, remind yourself that you're already a badass for even talking in front of people. Same thing for all of you guys if you feel nervous ever. Um, general warm up, I love what you did, right? Super simple movement, jumping jacks, you get them moving, PVC pass through, simple, you get them moving. You're also testing snatch grip, right? So you can kind of gauge that and have that as a teaching point. Uh, bootstrap or simple, getting them moving, strict knee raises. Here you go, scale number one, right? For our strict toes to bar. Much easier, like, first step to do for people. Um, PVC deadlifts, that's going to be one that I think you definitely coach, right? And don't let them move freely there. Like, you, you may call reps or you may say, okay, I want you to pause three seconds in the bottom of your deadlift, then deadlift. So maybe you're not calling reps, but you're also slowing them down so you can cue and correct. Um, and then you just progress your toes to bar. Strict leg raise makes it a little harder. Strict toes to bar makes it even harder. Um, so you pretty much find, you pretty much find exactly what their scaling options are probably going to be in your general warm-up. So I think this was a great job at not wasting the general warm-up and getting that done and then having more time for your specific for the barbell later. Um, I like that you had like some, some little barbell stuff in there too, like the PVC high pulls um, and the overhead squats, like same thing on the deadlifts. I would coach those. Mm -hmm. My only thing on the deadlift, the high pull and the overhead squats is you've got numbers. So you have four overhead squats. You may give a Lisa cue and then see Deanna needing help, which is done with her four. Yeah. So I would maybe go no numbers there and call reps because you may do less. You may do more based on how class and your coaching is going. Um, so anytime you guys have a more advanced movement, don't promise a rep range. And like I do this, I'll say one more, guys. And I'm like, mm, I lied. You might mess it up. We might have two more. So like just leave that open ended so you have the ability to coach there. Um, in your specific warm up, it's a longer mom. So I do think you made a good choice here by having like three rather than like five steps, anywhere from three to five steps in the specific warm up For the snatch high pull, give me something, give the group something to think about. What do you want to see there happen? Bar path and elbows up. Bar path. So shave, you know, however you want to say that. Keep the bar close to your belly, shave your, shave your chest, however it's going to be. Give the teaching point. Muscle snatch, what do you want to see there? Full extension before the arms. And before you bend, I like it. That's one you can use. Um, a few different ones you guys can use there. You know, strong punch, you're ending, lining the barbell up with your heels, how, whatever you want to use. Nice job. Uh, squat snatch, what do you want to see there? A strong receiving position. So I'd probably have them hold <laughs> at the bottom. Um, you got overhead squats in. You've got squat snatch here. Give me, give me uh, a way you would layer into getting them into the bottom of that squat snatch. Overhead squats? So you got overhead squats. 
after the overhead squats. Oh. Anybody, anybody can chime in. So you're you about to your... snatch, power snatch, four inches, yeah. six inches, all yeah. the way down. Oh, I actually did that. Them. I did do that. Oh, beautiful. See, so you did a good job. You just brain farted. Yeah, ease them down there. So like two inch receive. Um, I used to just go two inch, four inch, six inch full. And now I go two inch hold. Don't move your feet, squat. Four inch hold. Don't move your feet, squat. So you're also like really, really getting them to lock in their footwork and that foot shuffle. I started doing that because I had a whole shitload of people that were doing these power snatches and their feet were under their hips and they were doing like up into the toes and down and they weren't shuffling for me. Well, if you do that in your two inch power snatch and I say, don't move your feet and you have to give me an overhead squat, what's not going to work? So it kind of auto corrected people into getting a strong foot shuffle. Um, so nice job that you implemented that in. I think this is a great example, you know, using the general warm up to, to teach and, and build skills in there and not wasting it. So really, really nice job with this overall. Any questions, thoughts, statements on this? The only thing I might add into the general warm up is a set of push ups. Like, even though it's a simple movement, it gives me an opportunity to, to teach it real quick. Um, and it, it's also just a good warm up, right? It's arms moving. All right, who's next? Let's go, yours, Jose. I coached this class today, 5 and 6 a.m. This, this was our, our interval lot, right? Okay, so workout, uh -huh. guys. <laughs> workout. We have five sets. 50 double unders, 12 cows for the, or is it 12, 10 for the bike? Is that what that means here? Yep. Okay. 12, 10, 12, yeah. 12 colors, male, 10 female. 12, yeah. And then 10 box jump overs. When you finish your round, you're going to rest one to one. So whatever time frame it took you to do that full round, you're going to mirror that in your rest. Our target time is two minutes, two minutes and 20 seconds. You can't see that, but I'm coaching the same one today. Um, so that's our workout, right? Let's. So I do, I do the the way that they do the napkin with a timeline on the bottom and see when do I have to start. But today I made a mistake when I did the planning. Okay, so because let's go through I thought that. Five sets, a time cap should be three minutes, and I did it fifteen minutes, which is not because I totally missed the resting. Yeah, not when much. I was coaching <laughs> five a.m. I was like I was doing the the briefing and then someone said but that doesn't make sense make any sense at 5 a.m everyone's sleeping and i was like oh shit you're right so now i'm trying to have to come like compress everything the the general then the specific to now i don't have to start at minute 25 now i have to start at minute 20 or even before that one i'll tell you what so, i tell you what i did um and it, do you coach later on this? No. Yeah, I coach okay. five and then at six. I okay. Really um, I'll tell you what I did just to give you an, like an idea on like saving time. Um, all right. So we've got a little bit of a different style. I, I write my, you'll see mine in a second. It's way worse than this. Um, I'm still old school on a piece of paper as well. Um, so we've got double unders. I see he's got singles, um, higher jump, and then starting to speed up the cadence of the rope. So I like that you have your specific, your, your stages of double unders marked in there. Um, and then box jump, you went jump up, take a step up. Yeah, so I, I did jump up, step down, then jump up. Um, I did, um, I first up, started with step ups, then jump up, step down, and then box jump overs, and then okay. increasing the height. Because today it was like... You... Did you add? Did you add anything? Any like nuggets in that, like footwork? Um, what direction you're going to turn? Things like that. I said, um, keep yourself. You don't need to stand up. Keep yourself um, close to it. And and then when I was briefing the workout, I said the first box jump after the air bike, you're gonna feel it. So the That's first a good one, heads up. one, the first one is the one that you need one. to be sure that you land. On... That was the most valuable piece of advice that whole morning. I yeah, got off that air bike and I was like, all right, like, here work. we go. Let's give it a try. And I almost failed it. And it's like, if Jose didn't say that, my shin was going to be destroyed. 
<laughs> I said it. I said it's it good, like it's when, a good when I did the briefing. I said it when before when I did the what prep. And even though one person fell, one person did jump and fell in in her knee. So I think that's Mary's always like, like the first rep. Even if it's like not a bike into box, like no matter what it is, I always think like guys get to the box, take a breath, and then go is always just a good caution statement anyway. Um, on on movements like double under, pretty complex. Box jump, pretty simple. Bike, really simple. Right on those simpler movements what i like to do to try to like keep things fresh is i like to think of like what how is like roman krenikov going to be doing these box jumpers right i try to think of like these higher level competitors that are trying to save seconds off that's going to make a little bit of a difference and then that way i have more nuggets to try to give class um so like on the box jump today i did exactly what you did step up get that going a box jump step off get that going and then on a very low box we're going to do six box jump overs. And every time you guys turn, face the same wall. We have a big mural at the gym. So my cue is face the mural. And why did I give that instruction? So they don't get dizzy. Exactly. So they don't get dizzy, right? Because you start to turn only right, you get dizzy and then you get a little weird. Um, and then on the second one that we were doing jump overs again, I just layered something else. So this time I kept the stay low, like you said. That uh, was the second one. And then on the third one, because it was a 30 inch box, we had even more to grow. Then it was, okay, we're going to do it like dancing. You're in front of the box, you jump, that's one. You spin off, that's two. You step off with the last foot, that's three. So then I took it like we were literally dancing. And we did a couple slow on my call. So I went one, two, three. And at, after three, they should be ready to jump for four again. And then I did two reps like that. And then I let them go. So like on those simpler movements, think of some things that you may see like in higher level competition and not that we have to hammer it for people, but it just gives these little nuggets in class and it makes class that much more exciting. Um, what I did, because I felt like going through today, um, you know, general warm up, it was very simple. My goal was to just get the body temperature real hot and get like the hamstrings and lower back loose because I know it's probably sore from yesterday. Um very simple warm up, and then I did an EMOM. So I did 10 minute EMOM on the odd minutes, simple jump rope, first round, just single unders. Work on your hands being in front of your pockets. On the e on the even, I did my step ups. The next cycle, the double unders turned into a higher jump. The box the box step up turned into a box jump. So I, I gave myself this little EMOM that I know would continue to get body temperature up but also was layering in each minute, had a new skill to it. Um, the reason I did that was just so redundant on we're only doing box, rest, box, rest, box, rest. And then same thing on the rope, rope, rest. Because I, I find personally when I'm teaching the jump rope, you have one person that's engaged and then nine of them are like off in space and they don't want to hear it for the ninth time. Um, so the people that really didn't want to hear it, it just gave them an email and some extra equipment to do going through um so just like be creative my point in that is be creative like it doesn't always have to be 10 minutes you know rope drill 10 minutes box drill blend them make emoms make intervals just make sure you have enough time to still deliver your teaching point um if you're going to do that and obviously make it so they're not dying like we did 30 jump ropes and then we did six to eight box steps or jumps so they had a range to do um otherwise you could definitely make that too hard and then they're smoked for the workout so nate when um, you did that imam with the jump roping in the, the boxes did you explain the progressions before or like just right before the i did it started? as i went okay i did it as i went but i told them that in this imam i gave a, a rule if we hit 30 seconds rest no matter where you are stop because otherwise you know someone's going to a minute second 50 and it blows my whole thing um it also makes me be very short and deliberate from what i'm layering in um but i did tell them each round we do i'm going to add something to think about and by the time we've started it's not going to look like our workout and your last minute nine minute ten are going to be the movements and the height that we're doing in the workout so they knew those two last minutes they were going to get like a tester on the water. I gave the option 
to do the full 50 double enders in minute nine and the full 10 box jump overs at full height in minute 10. And their instruction was you should have both of those done by a 40 second mark. If you have them done by a 40 second mark, you have my green light on what the prescription is. If it took you longer than that, then I'm gonna recommend you lower the double unders or jump rope or lower the box height or rep so you can move quicker. So that was like my sneaky way to test them also on those two items. Um, I tested the bike in the general warm-up. We did an easy minute, did some mobilization, sent them on a run. We did a moderate minute, did some mobilization, sent them on a run, and then we did a hard minute. And in the hard minute, they looked to see where their calories landed. I gave them a number. I said, if you were 12 plus, you did 15 cows per round. If you had a plus in your minute for boys, you have my green light for 15. If you were under that, I want you to take five cows off. And then a the girl's like, gave the same thing. So even though like we didn't have so much time to test, I got sneaky in my testing to have scaling well. Questions on like that? So Jose, just I think you did a great job with this, minus like accidentally forgetting the rest round. Like you take that in, and everything shifts. Um, but let yourselves like get creative with stuff like that. It keeps your class fresh and like not so redundant in the same thing every day. Yeah. Uh, question: what, what did you? What was your your test? So what in the gen, in the general warm up, I finished my general warm up with a one minute bike. I told them you're gonna you're gonna move that one minute bike at like eighty to ninety to eighty five percent, maybe ninety if you're good at bike. Something that's very good, but that they would have used to do box shots. Didn't tell them I was testing them. Had them move, and then at the end of the minute, before I gave them the bathroom break, I said, "If you were over twelve calories for guys, you're good to go for RX rep. If you were under twelve calories in the minute, I want you to take three to four reps off the bike." And then girls, I did the same thing. Our girls were 12 calories per round. So I told girls, if you were over eight calories in your minute, go for the 12. If you were under eight calories in the minute, um, let's scale that down to like 10 or eight around. So it gave them guidance on how to choose the proper calorie on the bike. And then on my last two minutes of EMOM, minute nine, go for your full reps that you're doing in the workout. If you can finish your full reps in under 40 seconds, you have my green light. Otherwise, let's take them off. Same thing with the 10 box ships. If you were done with those in under 40, take them off. Because basically what I did there was one minute plus 40 seconds plus 40 seconds is the top of our time cap that Mayhem wanted at that two minutes and 20 minute mark. Mm -hmm. Let's look at this monster of a workout. Oh no, did it not send it? Hold on one second, guys. I'm going to send... Oh no, I found it, Never mind. All right, can you see my notebook now? Mm -hmm. Cool, this is a little messy. This was mayhem yesterday. Um, so for you guys that did it, hopefully gives, will give you some ideas on how to navigate a day like this. For you guys that just do um, one Metcon, one Metcon, one strength, this would be like if you had Filthy 50 or some kind of Metcon that was maybe a hero wad that you know is going to take like potentially upward of 40 minutes, how you can integrate some of the stuff that I, I integrated here. Um, for you guys that don't have mayhem, the day was a heavy day power clean. We had to build to a three, a two, and then three singles. So you had five sets of heavy power cleans to get through. Um Obviously, we're building the singles. That range was going to be 85 to 90 percent. So I also need warm up time for those power cleans. And then afterward, our workout was a DT variation that had a bunch of pull ups, three rounds of DT, pull ups, two rounds of DT, pull ups, one round. So not only did we have a hero one. We have a hero wad plus an extra round to that original hero wad plus pull ups. It was a 15 minute time cap. So it was, you are a fit individual if you're finishing yesterday's workout RX on the time cap. Their goal was 10 to 12 minutes. So you want to talk about you are flying if you're finishing that. So this is how I laid yesterday out. I knew I didn't have enough time to do a, a warm up and then do a specific coach led skill for the power clean. I was going to blow my timeline by decades or I was going to have to rush the power clean to where people weren't going to get where I needed them to go. Um, so kept my warm up fairly simple. 
I did 30 mountain climbers. I actually dropped the Samson lunge down a little bit to save some time, some push-ups. Mountain climbers, heart rate, Samson lunge, just start to mobilize the hips, push-ups. That's for my push jerk later. And then I called the reps on a – I actually did a clean pull. I changed my mind on the deadlifts. Um, the way I did that was – Three second hold in the bottom, you can move freely as you went. I had them do eight reps. So I let them move, but I gave them that cue. If you have to hold the starting position for three seconds every time, that gave me enough time to change starting positions. Um, and I gave them the focal point of shaving their legs. Shave your shins, shave your thighs. Round two, heart rate, again, kickbacks, inchworm. That's for the hamstrings. I added another push up there um, just to keep getting that warm shoulder press. Um, on the shoulder press, same thing. Three second hold in the starting position that gave me time to co coach static. And then when they pressed, their thought process was let's go elbows back in front of the bar. So that way, when they're doing their push jerks later, the shoulder, the bar is getting racked on the shoulder. Um, and then we did hang muscle clean. I called those. I did a mid thigh. I gave them the cue stand before you pull. So you guys can kind of see, I don't need to keep going through this. You guys can see how I started doing my specific warm-up early on in my general warm-up. So it's like we would move quick from one, two, three movements. I would slow it down for a movement or two. We would move quick again. I would slow it down. It also just gives them the on and off from the barbell. So it's not as torture, as much of a torture session. It gives them some time to like break and just do some mindless air squats and things like that. What I felt conflicted about yesterday is I have to teach the clean well, but then I also have this jerk. So what I did was go shoulder press, and then I did a tall jerk where I had them hold the bar at their forehead, and I only had them work the under. Yes, I was sacrificing the initial dip and drive, but that was going to be something that I coach as we got moving on. Um, I would say putting my specific warm-up in my general warm-up probably saved me five or six minutes. Um, from there, I was almost perfect. I think I was one minute slow, but if you notice, I go three to 16 on the general warm-up. So it is a slower general warm-up, but it's really a blend of the both. And then I started my specific 17 to 33. Um, so I, even though I lost my minute here, I was still on track when it came to this point. They just, they didn't have their normal water break like I would normally give them. Um, and then from there, I ran a clock, 16 minute clock. The first one, two, three lifts were all triples, building in percentages. The way I worded that was light, moderate, moderate, heavy. And then, okay, by minute eight, we're starting our power clean workout. I had all my percentages written on the board for them. I was also verbally guiding it. And this kept me on track to have people go from minute zero to minute 16 with a warm up and hitting what they need to hit in that single, single mode. You guys that ran this yesterday, did you run a clock for the power claim? How'd you execute that? Jose? You never ran a clock. Gina? Gina ran a clock? I don't know if she's still on. I can't see her. Do you remember what clock Gina ran, Justin? What was the time frame? 12? Okay. Yeah, it's 12. How about you, Jose? I did not coach this one, but I like to hear the beeps. So I I set up I set up the the interval every ninety seconds. I I, I yes, like. did not. So you guys moved a little quicker. Did you do like a warm up power clean couple sets before the twelve minute clock? Yeah, remember I think Justin? So. Yeah. I think we did, first we did some CBC and then empty bar, and then they started building in the 12 minutes. Okay, so, okay. so you kind of, the build was yeah. a little fast. Um, something I also consider that you guys can play with too, especially on a day like this, and like if it's 50, filthy 50, I do this, I'll do like empty barbell reps for the movement, for the movements that are in the wad. So like the same format of how I integrated deadlift, muscle clean, all that stuff. Um, for a really long hero type wad, do the same thing. Um, put those warm up reps on a clock too. So, like, let's say you run that 12 minute clock, tell them minute one, two, and three is an imam of three reps building. And then once you hit minute three, minute five is the first set, minute seven is the second set. You get what I'm saying? So, like, you give them this instruction to speed it up too. 
just so they have more guidance. Um, I had a guy the other day that we did, we, I put a running clock on 15 minutes to build these heavy front squats and someone finished somehow in five minutes. And then they just sat there and stared at everybody. And I'm like, dude, come on. So even on the people that are sandbagging, it kind of keeps them engaged and moving as well. Um, besides that, I think this is, this is the part that you can probably take away from more. I knew everyone capped out. So deload barbells from what you hit today, I gave them a percentage of what they were going to do on DT. Um, I told them 40 to 50 cent, 50 cent, 50%, an error on the side of caution. So what I told them is that 40% or that 45% should be a number that if you had to do an unbroken round of DT gun to your head, you can. It's not something you have to break. I reiterated, don't do that in this workout, but you could if you had to. Um, and then the way I prepped my pull-ups, we did some kip swings up here. I knew I didn't have a ton of time. I just sent those athletes to the bar to get their, their pull-ups going. If they were scaling, we automatically went to a box uh, jumping pull-up. So I set that up. And then I told them, when we did our Murph prep, we had all the Murph stuff. If you were doing 15 plus pull-ups around, you're good for the full RX. If you do 10 plus pull-ups around, I want you to scale to the 20, 15, 10. I gave them... Um, like exact numbers. And then if normally in your workouts, you're doing sets of five to six, then I had them scaled to like the, the 15, 10, five. Um, so you see like at every corner and turn, I had like some kind of layer in of how to scale that workout. Because otherwise what was happening yesterday or any of these hard workouts, is you had people that were literally like halfway capping, like they weren't even close. Um, so my challenge to you guys, whether it's mayhem or cap, start to give these like groundworks of what, what you need to, what kind of sets do you need to do to do the RX, where you need to be time frame wise, things like that. Does that make sense? And that can serve as your testers. You can also put it into physical practice, but if you don't have time, you're at least layering more guidance besides just saying, Go light today. This is a hard workout. It's not enough for most of our athletes. They don't know what we know. They don't know what it's going to feel like, like we know what it's going to feel like. They're still semi in the dark. Let's practice that for one second. Let's say it's that workout we talked about, which is cow row to front squat and the 400 meter run. What would be a good metric on your calorie road you could yell out? to have someone figure out how to scale that. We determined that you needed to be done with the calorie row in about 90 seconds or less. Minute max cow test. Yeah, you can you can test them in the warm up some point or use your literal breakdown of what you determined for your stimulus. You can also be like, hey, this this first 21 calories no longer than 90 seconds at the slowest. And you'll know, you'll see the person in class go, and you go, you, you're doing 15. And you, and they, they, most of the time they know kind of like where they are when you do give some guidance like that. Um, what about the 21 uh, barbell? Obviously load, but to build on load. Use your stimulus again. We, we determined that we're gonna break one time so like use that as a gauge. Guys, you're 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 allowed one break on this 21. Okay, if you're gonna have to break the barbell more than one time, I want you to go ahead and lessen the load or or lessen the reps, depending what the stimulus is. If it's light and fast, then maybe just lessen the load. If it's if it's heavy, play with reps a little bit. Um so like layer in some of those and start to practice that. It'll just be you'll find that you have much better results when it comes to hitting stimuluses, not having to use time caps, things like that. Hold on, you're, you're muted. Yes, okay, I have a question. So like, let's say um, something like the rower, let's say we don't have time to test the rower. Um, would it be okay if I say, okay, you have up to 90 seconds. If you're at 90 seconds and you haven't hit 21, just step off and then your next round, you're gonna, you know, if it's the same amount of calories, you're gonna just try to hit the same amount you hit in that 90 seconds. 
Yeah, you can do that. Um, I've done that with people because like with Mayhem, it's hard to actually test people sometimes. Like we just don't have the time. Like yesterday was one of those situations that like for me to really properly execute that wad, I need to put people through testing testers. I couldn't do that. So I just gave my guidelines. Um, But I had a guy today that was in his 70s and his instruction was round round one. Because you can just kind of tell like the wheels are going to fall off the bus potentially in a workout. Round one, just on the bike for a minute. Whatever calorie you hit in the minute, then just duplicate that calorie for the rest the rest of the minutes. He ended up doing like 11. And, he, and so it, he auto-scaled himself by like round one almost being a tester too. So you can certainly get creative with that. There's no right – I wouldn't say there's there's no right or wrong. You just want to get the athlete and then have them – have them have the best guidance possible for what we're trying to deliver them to, to today you know like not not every workout is a um a benchmark wad so it doesn't need to be this perfect score and wad file all the time but we do need to have them get the stimulus that we need to have them do so when the benchmark wad does come up we can actually test the results accurately does that make sense today um Someone told me, hey, I can I will not be able, I don't know if I can hit in the third round the 50 doubles. So I said, okay, just do it one minute. And if it goes beyond that, then leave it. I give yeah, it that give one, it, one minute give mark. It, give an individual time cap for the workout, or you can even be like, okay, if you're unsure, you're gonna do 35 double unders per round. And your goal is is to have those 35 under X time every round. So it's not an unbroken goal, but they have this like challenge, even though you're scaling them too. Um, so like little challenges within the workouts too. I love to use those. I think those are great. Um, get creative with those as well. Um, any other thoughts? At least because we ran out of time, I'll text you back your lesson plan like individually too. Okay. You said you feel better about whiteboard brief slightly. Yes. Yes, yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> Film yourself. Watch yourself. I will. Come up with yeah. those little plans. You're, I think Santi says this. You're, you're essentially a um, entertainer and you're just using skills. So, like, the more comfortable you can get, the better. So, do, do whatever you have to do. Make, your, make yourself have scripts. Imagine that you're not Issa, that you're some actor and you're, you're going in front of a movie. Whatever it's going to be, compart compartmentalize it, um, give yourself a, uh, what do they call that when you have like another personality? Alter ego. Give yourself an alter ego before you step on uh, in front of classes. It sounds dumb, but a lot of successful people do things like that. Like what was mm-hmm. Kobe Bryant? He stepped on the basketball board, basketball court. He was the black mama. He, w- he wasn't this father anymore. He wasn't this husband anymore. He was a trained killer when he was on the basketball court. Make somebody up for yourself. You don't got to tell nobody about it. We won't think you guys are crazy. Step on the coaching floor and you're somebody else and you're and you you'll dominate, you'll be confident, all that stuff. Same thing when you work out. Then you go back to who you were once the once the time time hits. All right. Anything you guys want to add before we call it a day? Cool. All right, guys. I'll see you Thursday for our movement then. See you guys. Bye. Thank you.